hello and welcome to the presentation on 5G, new technologies and the testing aspects that relates to Calnex. So we're going to be looking at a, a number of topics today. So first we're going to look at transport and synchronization in the network, the changes in network architecture, and then finally the testing challenges involved and how that relates to Calnex. So one of the key changes with 5G is in terms of the transport network and how it changes. Uh, let's look at how the network is changing and how it affects the topic of synchronization. So first, what is 5G? So 5G is intended to deliver three separate aspects. Um, the first is an enhanced experience for mobile broadband, but also potentially a replacement for home broadband as a fixed wireless service. We have the Internet of Things or massive communications of millions or billions of devices. And then finally, 5G is intended to deliver ultra-reliable, low-latency communications for new applications that we haven't even thought of yet. So in order to deliver higher bandwidth, millions of devices and completely new services, we need a new thinking in terms of the architecture of the network. The main part of the transport network that is evolving is, is the front hall. The front hall network was originally conceived as a simple fiber optic connection between a baseband unit and a radio unit. This was intended to, to replace the BTS or the base station equipment that was connected up to the antenna via coax cable. The benefit of doing this was to split the baseband and the radio functionality and be able to connect that up by fiber using a SIPRI connection. The idea then developed of being able to take the baseband units further away from the radio in a baseband hotel in a switching or data center where all the baseband units were housed and then separate connections out to the radio units. So now the separate connections went from being a few meters up to potentially a few hundred meters or even kilometers. And then in the future with 5G, the split between the baseband units is taken further by splitting up the baseband unit into the central unit, the CU, and the distributed unit, the DU. The ability to split this gives more flexibility to the network. Now, the other thing that is happening is that you have a lot more traffic to be handled by the radio unit. So these two challenges of splitting up the network and the ability to handle more traffic needs a new approach. And one of the key approaches that's being looked at is really to migrate these links from CIPRI, what's called eCIPRI or CIPRI or radio over ethernet. Ethernet gives that flexibility of being able to provide switching in that front hall network. It also allows the bandwidth to be better handled by splitting the functionality of the units in that front hall network. Now that's beneficial and necessary for the flexibility that's demanded of 5G. However, it creates a challenge in terms of SIPRI, which is a simple point-to-point -point fiber link. Moving to Ethernet, it's now a switched network. For something like synchronization, moving from a dedicated point-to-point -point fiber to a switched Ethernet network provides challenges which need to be addressed. And that's where Calnex comes in. So the ESIP retest challenge. So as we have just shown, the network has moved from a dedicated fiber to a switched ethernet. In addition to synchronization, it also presents different challenges because ethernet networks by de definition have latency, loss, jitter, reordering, corruption, and so on and so forth. So bad things happen to packets in an ethernet network. That's something we already know. Well, first of all, CIPRI, mess CIPRI control messages, the radio control messages between the baseband unit and the radio unit, can be sensitive to delay and things like latency, loss, and reordering. And why is that? So because this was designed to work uh, on a dedicated fiber link, now they're having to go through an ethernet switched network. The control and management radio messages need to be tested and verified for the front hall with controlled latency and loss with what we call a network emulator. The other challenge is that there are emulators available in the market, but many of them have lower rates uh, and it can be very difficult to emulate a network and achieve that, that high level of performance. So I mentioned that many emulators only operate at lower rates and that is an issue with the front hall. So most of these front hall interfaces are moving from 1G to 10G and 25G and potentially up to 100 eventually. So any testing that you do emulating packet network effects has to employ a network emulator that also works at those higher speed rates all the way up to 100 gig. And of course, we need to emulate that for the core, which is potentially 100 gig already. And then finally, the other aspect is that synchronization is carried on this link very often using this physical sync e-clock. 
So the Sinky clock must be passed through the emulator, and that's what the A100 product from Calmex delivers. This is a 100 gig network emulator, which really emulates things like latency, lost packets and reorders and corruption, you know, all the things that you would see in an ethernet switch network in the front hall. This could be emulating the link either between the central units and the distributed unit, or the distributed unit and the radio. And the reason for doing this, remember, is to test that all of these control messages between the baseband unit and the radio are still working in the presence of these ethernet network effects. So all of these uh, testing challenges can now be overcome using the, the Calnex Atero 100 gig network emulator. This is a, a network emulator with speeds up to 100 gig and beyond that can accurately emulate the latency, loss, jitter, reordering um, that you would see in the front hall. So this could be emulating the link between the CU and the DU or the DU and the radio to test that the control messages between the BBU and the radio are still working in the presence of their network ethernet effects. So Calnex has a product that works up to 100 gig. It also supports Sync e pass through, which is incredibly important for testing um, ESEP front hall. Um, and can also filter specifically on ESEP and radio over ethernet messages to empower and corrupt a set of network profiles, which represent the typical front hall network, making test cases significantly easier. The other aspect of front hall that changes is in synchronization. Sync demands for 5G new applications are, are now much greater. So remember that better sync and accuracy allows for more services and better performance over the radio. So a new class of clocks for sync -E and PTP are being developed. These clocks can have limits as low as 5 nanoseconds for performance and network limits as low as 100 nanoseconds for performance. This is the next generation of accuracy and these new clocks are being specified for 5G. So to compare the classes from 3G and 4G, class A and B boundary clocks, to the new enhanced clock specs for 5G, class C and D boundary clocks. So in this example, the PTP boundary clocks are going from time error performance of 50 nanoseconds to 10 nanoseconds or better. So that's a significant undertaking for equipment manufacturers to achieve this performance. And of course, a significant undertaking uh, for testing to meet this better accuracy. Um, which is what Calnex have done with the Paragon Neo, which has the accuracy and repeatability required to test class C and D boundary clocks and transparent clocks. The group that's looking at synchronization requirements are, are called the ITUT. And let's just take a, a quick look at the ITUT standards. So the ITUT developed a series of recommendations and standards for testing and network performance for the init initially for frequency deployment over synchronization and then for time and phase for 3G and 4G, as well as the fundamental 5G requirements, and then the enhanced specifications for the more accurate timing. Uh, the overall key message here is that the timing and synchronization products from Calnex support the testing of your equipment or network to all of these ITT recommendations. And then the other aspect is that the synchronization is going to become more demanding and more accurate. And again, the next generation of test equipment, the Calnex Neo, um, can address these enhanced requirements. So let's take a, a quick look at some of the enhanced testing requirements that can be tested with the Paragon Neo. So the Calnex Paragon Neo is the only test equipment on the market that can accurately and reliably test the latest enhanced standards for 5G. The key here is there are now a number of new network clocks that to be able to generate a relative time error of 260 nanoseconds across radio units. So all of these enhanced standards for the PRTC, for the boundary clock, the slave clock, network limits and enhanced EEC, including those type timing requirements on the EEC, uh, the seven nanoseconds on the MTI and 640 picoseconds on the TDF. So if we take a quick look at what this means for G.8262 versus G.8262.1, for example, the key changes here are in the amount of wonder the equipment generates when it's got a pure signal going in. So those MTI and TDEV requirements that we just mentioned are much tighter. Testing for this requires sub-nanosecond accuracy and 250 picosecond resolution 
that we now have with the Paragon Neo to allow us to meet this narrow measurement requirement. So, uh, just a quick summary of the Neo. The Neo is an instrument that covers speeds from 100 megabit to 100 gigabit and beyond. The key thing here is the accuracy. As I mentioned previously, the Neo has sub nanosecond accuracy, 200 picosecond resolution, and that includes timestamp resolution of the PTP engine itself, which is essential for testing class C and D devices. The Neo has a browser based GUI that can run on any browser and includes full automation functionality. The other big change is the Neo now has a test case driven workflow. For example, if you want to run a G.8273.2 noise generation test, the Paragon Neo will automatically set up the CADES configuration relevant to the selected standard. And I will show a, a brief representation of this. So as you can see here on the left hand side, we, we would simply choose the test. And in this case, uh, in this example that we're using, this is a G.8273.2 class C slave clock. Next, we would select the, the test section. In this case, it's a conformance test, G.8273.2 noise generation. We would simply select generate. The stimulus and the measurements uh, are selected automatically based on the profile selected. We start the test and the results will be generated automatically using uh, our tools such as CAT and, and PFE. So thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. Uh, just to summarize, and Calnex Solutions continue to invest and innovate to ensure that telecoms networks, operators, and manufacturers can accurately test their timing and synchronization solutions. We now have much needed test solutions allowing for accurate impairment testing of the new frontal without breaking synchronization. Calnex have also developed the industry leading Paragon line with the new Paragon Neo device, the only solution on the market that can reliably and accurately test the latest 5G enhanced standards. Thank you for your time.